The idea of regrowing body parts has fascinated scientists for centuries. Especially scientists like Dr. Alan Russell, who heads the University of Pittsburgh's McGowan Institute for Regenerative Medicine. There are dozens of animals that regenerate tissue in response to a given set of signals in a very unique, very targeted, and sometimes very rapid way. So a newt might be able to regenerate an entire limb within months. And thanks to the work of Russell's colleague, Dr. Stephen Badalak, one day we humans may be able to do it too. We work upon some of the fundamental questions by which uh, we as humans, as mammals, respond to injury. For over 20 years, Badalak has focused his formidable skills as a veterinarian, pathologist and general practitioner to achieving one goal, learning how to regrow body parts. And he's even had some success. Take the case of Lee Spivak. Several years ago, Spivak, the assistant manager of a hobby shop, became the first beneficiary of Badalak's research quite by accident. Well, I didn't think at the time I was being a guinea pig. I just wanted my finger back. While testing a model airplane at the store, he sliced off his fingertip with the propeller. Cut about there on the front, and then it went around to about there on the back. Spivak's brother, a research scientist, sent him some powder developed by his colleague, Stephen Badalak. It's called extracellular matrix, or ECM. Literally within six weeks, he went from having no end of his finger to a normal end of his finger. Personally, I thought it was probably a fluke, but then uh, it happened in a second individual, and um, I'm not that lucky. So what is this extracellular matrix that helped Spivak grow back his finger? Extracellular means outside of the cell. So every tissue in our body consists of cells, and those cells basically secrete their own environment. And it's just loaded with good stuff. Good stuff that Badalak hopes will trigger something we all did before we were born. Our cells in the right environment at that time in the womb had the ability to develop every tissue. Particularly in the first trimester, we show the, almost the same regenerative capacity as newts and salamanders and starfish do when you chop off a limb and they regrow it. So the signals are still there. And Badalak hopes his extracellular matrix, made from pig bladder with the cells removed, will help turn those signals back on. It could be fashioned into a circular shape or a tube shape if we wanted to consider making this into something that would form a, a blood vessel, for example. As for the powder form that helped Lee Spivak, it's now in clinical trials. We're very encouraged by our initial results. Badalak's work, though, is only one piece of the puzzle. In North Carolina, at the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine, Dr. Anthony Atala has taken a slightly different approach. In this lab, we actually uh, grow tissues and organs. Atala, a pediatric surgeon specializing in urology, is world famous for his pioneering work in making body parts. The whole concept here is actually a custom made or tailor-made body part for the patient. The patient walks in with a specific need. We take a very small piece of their tissue, grow the organ up, put it right back in. Though this may sound a lot like science fiction, it's not. A lot of it is already in the works. We have many different things in clinical trials right now, uh, and many things we have used clinically, like the urethras, the bladders, muscle, cartilage, uh, skin. Here, a surgeon is performing a transplant using a bladder made in Atala's lab from the patient's own cells. We grow the cells outside the body in large quantities, and we then place that into a three-dimensional scaffold, a mold, if you will, and it's very much like baking a layer cake. Once inside the body, the scaffold dissolves, leaving a functioning bladder. Other bioengineered organs, like this heart valve, are still in the experimental stage. We're in the bioreactor room, and here what we do is we actually mature the tissues once they're engineered, and this is actually a heart valve that we're engineering, and you see the fluid going through it, and you can actually see the leaflets going up and down, and this is actually what matures the heart valve right before it gets implanted. To create tissue, Atala's team takes commonplace technology and uses it in an unexpected way. Here, this ordinary inkjet printer is creating a mouse heart 
by spraying out layers of cells. This is an inkjet cartridge where we've removed the top of the cartridge, taken out the ink so that we can then load it with cells. One of the problems in making organs is when you seed cells using a pipette like this, you have no control over where the cells wind up. And so with bioprinting, we're going to use more accurate technologies such as an inkjet cartridge, which can place cells where we want them to go. Today, with scientists working on challenges like these, things we could once only dream of are now in the works all over the world. In fact, just last month in Spain, surgeons gave a woman a new windpipe grown from her own stem cells. Probably almost everything that you could imagine, somebody somewhere is thinking, how could I get that to regenerate? Scientists think that one day they'll even be able to regrow the human brain, or at least parts of it. Just imagine the potential that holds for diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's.